Hey friends, what's going on? This is Rick Backus. I am in the Hunter Valley in Australia. We're about an hour and a half, two hours north of Sydney. I'm here with Bruce Tyrrell. We're at Tyrrell Winery and we're in the heart of the Hunter Valley. And Bruce, the Hunter Valley in the States, a lot of people don't know because we don't get a lot of the wines over there. What What's the history of the Hunter Valley? Well, Hunter Valley is the, um, really the cradle of the Australian wine industry. Um, governments of the time probably made them one of the great decisions they'll ever make, and that was to, uh, in the early 1820s, start to promote grape growing and winemaking here in the Hunter. And at that stage, the only real alcohol was rum, and um, that was controlled by the military, and the only way the government could break that power was to get some more alcohol. So that's how we got started. Uh, early, eight, early, nearly 200 years ago. And Tyrrell's, this winery actually has quite a bit of history in the Hunter Valley. Yeah, my great-grandfather started here in 1858. Uh, in fact, where we're standing uh, now in the winery, this was built for the first vintage in 1864. And still here, uh, the old tin roof and, and the dirt floor, which was always my day. Yeah, that, there's actually a little shed outside, or right, it's a hut. Yep. And that's the original house. It's about the size of uh, a Buick. Right? But it's still standing outside. But um, you are one of the first wineries in the Hunter Valley, right? Oh, no, we were, we were a bit later coming. Um, 1820s, the, the Lindemann family got started. Um, and and it developed, the Hunter Valley developed out from the town of Maitland. So it came west. And we were lucky. Had my great-grandfather come 10 years earlier, we'd have been on lousy soil and we would have been gone mm. long ago. So we were just lucky he turned up at the right time and got one of the great bits of dirt. Nice, and well, when you think of Hunter Valley, people think of Semillon, they think of Shiraz, and we're, we're looking at a Semillon right here. What's this wine? Uh, this is an 07 Stephen Shiraz, a uh, single vineyard, which is something we've been developing and working on here for, I suppose, 20 odd years now. Uh, Semillon has been the obsession of my life. Um, I woke up 25 years ago and realized that I was one of the lucky people in the wine world that got to work for something that was unique. Yeah, we don't get a lot of your good Semillon over in the States, and some of the, the notes and the what you really get out of a good Semillon, you get toasted almonds, you get some hibiscus, some lanolin, uh, some fig. What do you look for in a really good Semillon? What is it, what comes I, the character I like to see is, well, in the, I suppose you get two lots in the bigger years. Uh, you get that um, lanolin sort of character. Um, New Zealanders love that. Um, but in the lighter, <laughs> fresh years, um, it's a character of, of sunlight soap. So soapy sunlight's a, an old-fashioned soap here in Australia. Used when I was a kid, and that always reminds me of that. And then that wonderful line of acid that runs through and keeps them oh, fresh yeah. forever. Well, it's really cool to see the, the wines that we've had so far, they're beautiful young, but they get even better as they age. So it's hard to decide. Do you want to drink them young or do you want to age them? I think probably it's a bit of a six six or one and a half a dozen of the other. I love them with age. My, my great love in, in all wine is, is old white. Yeah. Um, in 2007, we had a half bottle of Christmas Day, half bottle of that one, which is our top similar, uh, from 1967. So 40 years old, but in a half bottle, probably more like 50 odd years old. And it was as fresh as daisy. It was mm. absolutely fantastic. Love it. Well, Bruce, thanks for hosting. We're gonna have a little tweet up right now. Appreciate it, and thanks for making all this great wine. Not a problem. Cheers, mate.